Aisha Buhari, wife of the Nigerian president, has called on the Ministry of Women Affairs and all security agencies to expedite action and ensure justice is done on all rape cases in the country. She made the appeal in the message she posted across her social media platforms on Wednesday. The message came a few days after a first-year student of the University of Benin, Uwa Mozua, was raped and killed in Edo State and an 18-year-old student of the Federal College of Animal and Production Technology, Ibadan, Barakat Bello, was also reportedly raped and killed in Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. She launched a campaign last year followed by a planned advocacy for the constitution of a presidential task force on ending gender-based violence in Nigeria. Joining us to discuss this is Eniton Ibironke, who is legal practitioner. Good morning, Eniton. Good morning, Amaka. Uh, now, do you think when dignitaries like, you know, high-profile persons like the First Lady come in to talk about issues like this, do you think it's strong enough to push legislation just beyond what we see on social media? Well, first I would say that at least it's a first good step that dignitaries such as the First Lady have taken steps to talk on issues like this, but we all know that that is not enough. Yes, you can't, and with what is being done, is it enough to push legislation? No, it's not enough. There's got to be the need for lobby groups, for other, for them, for people, dignitaries, to get other organizations, CSOs, NGOs, that are involved in this particular areas of whatever thematic issues they're dealing with, to come together and have a voice. So while they may have the clout and they may have the hearing, but then that's not their four and primary area of focus. So it's important that they collaborate with other organizations that are already involved in that area to be able to push and create a strong lobby force. We do know that one thing that needs to be prevalent in the Nigerian society is the issue of lobbying. You know that in other crimes, you have lobbyists. You have lobbying where you actually think of what laws, what legislations should be put forward, and how to actually even go about making sure that the voice, that particular matter you're dealing with is heard. And that is one area that there needs to be signage in for us to see accurate, to actually see appropriate legislation that deal with issues that affect the people come into play. So what they do and what she's done is commendable, but then a lot more needs to be done because beyond just gender-based violence and putting for and pushing forward for legislation, I believe that it's important that people like her should use their position to actually look at creating enabling environments, organizations, I can actually go to the depth of the matter. What about community engagement? What about actually talking to men, to boys? You know, what about thinking of how do we actually, gender-based violence is committed by the party. So in this case, we have seen that all the rape cases that have come forward so far have been against women by men. So it's important we see that there is a common thread, men and boys, and in this situation, such, organ such dignitaries should go beyond just the mere talk or the public or the propaganda and say they push for this, but to actually see action take place that can begin to, that can be continued by subsequent administrations and even people, and even out of office, that they can take on and continue with. Yeah. The First Lady also mentioned that, you know, uh, women are becoming vulnerable in Nigeria. And in the past week, you can agree that it's been a torturous week uh, for so most Nigerians with the death of uh, Tina, uh, there was Omozua also, and Bello, uh, you know, Barakat that was mentioned, and so many others. What can a task force achieve, really? It's now that those are the questions that well, those are the questions that come to mind. And it's been a really unfortunate week. It's been really traumatic for women. It's been traumatic for the whole society and even beyond women. It's been traumatic for even men that, I mean, have a sense of value and have a lot of empathy. But then what we look at when we say tax force, I'm not sure exactly what would be new because we do already have in existence laws for different regions of Nigeria that cover issues of rape and sexual assault. But in the case that a task force is set up, it may actually create an, an, a, a stronger enabling environment for rape cases, for women to actually feel confident enough to come out and report rape cases. Because you do find that while the laws may exist and while the incidences may actually in, be on the rise, a lot of women do not report or are afraid to come out. Now, in the case of Tina, unfortunately, and Ua, 
And also the girl, the, I mean, because that really touched me. The 11 year, the 12 year old girl that was raped by 11 men in Jigawa, mm -hmm. that broke me. At that point, that mean forever, that, that totally broke me. I mean, that was the youngest of the rape victims that have been recorded. But these cases are getting the outcry and are coming out because women were killed. So let's imagine that it was just rape and there was no murder, there was no killing. Would we get the same outcry? So maybe the case of a task force would actually help because there would be the real implementation of, of the actions of, this, of the sentencing or convictions that would actually go with a rape case. But then it may be a good idea, but we need to do a lot more than a task force, mm -hmm. in my opinion. All right. Uh, I mean, again, let's take a look at the law. W what can be the highest form of penalty for a rapist? You know, within this week also, many have called for stiffer penalties. And can there be really stiffer penalties, if I may ask? Well, truth is that the, I believe that it, for rape cases, I mean, I believe from the law, there is, I doubt there will be any stiffer penalty than an immediate death sentence. Because for a conviction of rape, where a person has been convicted, and that's where I feel that there might be some slight challenges with the law and there might be a need to look at the law again. You need to have a conviction for a rape, for a rape case. And in that case, the sentencing is a life imprisonment. However, you have situations where you have an attempt to rape or sexual assault. Now, the issue with rape or attempt is that there must be actual penetration. That's how the law puts it. And so you find that it may actually be by virtue of the way the law is worded or evidence. Because you know one thing with the law is that if you cannot bring forth evidence to convict a person, your case already gets defeated. And we know that rape is a case that is very difficult to be evidenced. And so you have the sentencing for rape already being life imprisonment where there is a conviction. You have other slightly lower case, lower sentences where there's an attempt, where you, where you have an issue of attempt, sexual assault, you have 14 years. You have also, you also have sexual harassment three years. So the range, the range is for sexual sexual offenses go from three years to life imprisonment, depending on what the person, the victim that is bringing the allegation can actually prove. But unfortunately, in the case of those that have died now, I mean, definitely it's clear that it's, it's murder or whatever, I mean, whatever, the lowest sentence will be manslaughter, which cannot obviously be the case here. But for that, you get, you get life imprisonment and in some crimes actually gets death, the death sentence. Mm. And so I'm afraid that by your explanation, it almost feels like the system is allowing uh, more people to get away without, you know, justice being served. What would it take to change the wording of this law or to take a look and, you know, make it more realistic and change it if uh, we have to do so? What would it take? Well, now you say that now that is it. Those are the, so we're beginning to see the reason why the issues of rape and reporting and convictions are very, very difficult. And why the, the world as a whole is actually looking at saying, we need to get up, are you having protests? Are you having people, women and men, campaigning and saying, that's why you have the Me Too campaign. You have those campaigns that come and say, you know what, now maybe people are deciding that we're going to shame the rapists, we're going to shame rape apologists. We're going to actually take, literally take the law into our hands and then make sure that their reputation is damaged. Because when you are waiting for a conviction or you are trying to prove something and we know how the legal system is, it literally takes away from you, it takes away from your family, it takes away from your reputation. Now, when you talk about how do we change the law, that's going to take a lot of, it's going to take a lot of lobbying, like I said, it's going to take a lot of thinking. It's the legislative, it's legislator, legislation, sorry, it's the legislative arm of government really willing to take a look at this issue and say we're going to speak up. One of the problems with this is that how many women do we have in legislative positions? How many women, female voices do we have in authority to say we want to fight against gender-based violence? Which is why I do understand where the first lady was coming from. Because you find there's a debt of women in the positions to create change in terms of legislation and in terms of having a voice to speak up. And then do we have enough men who are out there in the legal in the legislature in the legislature and even in society to say 
that we want to speak up and say, let's change the laws. Let's, how do we prove that rape was taking place? Is there, a, is there a faster, more expedient way? How does medicine and law come to play? Because you need to prove that rape took place. And rape, like I said, in the definition, must actually be the actual act. Of course, the law was kind enough, I would say, to have places where you have touching in other forms, either an object or any other body parts, and those are lesser sentences. But think about it. Sexual harassment is actually bringing something like when you have sexual attempts to, when you have an attempt to commit rape is for 10 years. So a person, that's probably one of the reasons why the latest conviction was for 14 years for a man that raped his neighbors, his tenants, 14-year-old niece. And he got just 14 years. There was rape, but I mean, whatever, if your lawyer is good enough, we know the law is an ass sometimes. But you have sexual assault, which is with an object or any body part, taking just three years, and sexual harassment taking three years. I mean, somebody, so really, looking at those cases, can we have a situation where proving that I was raped or a person was raped is not as onerous? How do you prove after the fact? For instance, we had a case that broke out a few years, a few months ago, where it was done many years ago. So you were raped 15, 20 years ago. And you finally have the courage to come out. What is the evidence you want to prove? So you find that, that those are the areas where the law needs to be changed to say how, what kind of evidence can be brought forth? Do I need to bring actual evidence? There's no, there's no fluid anymore. There's nothing to show that it happened. How do I actually prove that it happened? Or which other punish punitive measures can be put in place to be able to say, if a person has an allegation of rape, how do I go? Can I, if I get five people who can actually show, or if I get what other form of evidence beyond myself, the victim, was it a one-off? Is it therapy? What really needs to be done? Those are areas that I believe that the law would need to look at. And this cannot be done just by the law alone, but it's going to be done by society as a whole. And that's a role where the role of, I keep saying every time when I talk about things I have to do, behavioral change, these are behavioral change issues. And so while the law may do its own part, the law is finally, and we can see from the law that the punishment and the actions actually almost let the rapists get away because the victim has to prove that I was raped. Mm. Thank you so very much, Eniton, for the perspective you brought to the conversation this morning. And as always, please keep safe out there. Thank you very much, Amaka.